How's it going, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of your favorite podcast. And we're here to talk about a rough week for everyone's favorite soccer slash football team. Uh, we've brought someone along to help us with this discussion. This is the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. And it's in. Darwin Jones with the response for Orange County. And it is a massive one. Austin Bold dominant the last seven. Forrester in the middle now. Gets around the few defenders. Forrester with the outside of the foot. What a strike by Harry Forrester. It's the opening goal for Orange County. Heads it down. Back post. Opportunity and a goal. A beautiful goal by Orange County. This is the Orange and Black Soccer Cast, the first and only podcast dedicated to Orange County Soccer Club, its fans, and supporters. Follow us on Twitter at OCSC underscore Soccer Cast or on Facebook at Orange and Black Soccer Cast. How's it going, Orange County? Welcome to another episode of the Orange and Black Soccer Cast presented by Roughneck Scarves and Icarus FC. We are the first and only podcast dedicated to Orange County Soccer Club, its fans, and supporters. I'm your host, Ray Samora, and I'm with you pretty much each and every episode as we discuss all things Orange County Soccer Club. Joining me at the last minute, but as he always does, and, and the, the reigning champion for the number of episodes on this podcast, we've got Dylan from County Line Coalition. Dylan, how's it going? It's going well. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of a last minute thing. Just playing FIFA. So, excuse me. Wow, playing FIFA. FIFA almost became more important than this podcast here. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about FIFA as we get into this episode. Also on the uh, episode, as always, since last season, uh, down in San Diego, we've got Alan. Alan, how's it going? That's uh, going all right. It's going all right. Um Teaching is a thing that I do now, kind of. So that's going all right. Um, I feel like podcasting has helped me because I like just talk into the void and get like no response from half the students sometimes. So thank you for preparing me for being a virtual teacher. Uh, but things are going all right. Uh, it's cooling off. Um, we're getting right into like the run up to the playoffs in Group B, and things have been outrageously entertaining. Uh, so I'm excited to talk about it and to dig into a couple matches and um, talk about the big week that will be. So I, I, I think Dylan, uh, Alan, compared us to some junior high students uh, apparently here and also maybe throwing our guests into that comparison there. Um, and let's bring them on, our guest here, first time on the Orange and Black Soccer Cast, uh, someone that's had really a great start to his season with Orange County. And that's Brian Olosky. Brian, welcome to the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, thank you for taking some time uh, out of your evening to join us. Uh, first time on this podcast, we promise we'll go easy on you. We're, we, we don't ask the hard-hitting questions. We're, we, we, we tend to have a little bit more fun, and you'll realize that as we go through. Uh, give us a quick uh, just rundown of how this, this season, the start to the season has gone for you. Yeah, I think... Uh... As a team, we've started pretty well. I think we could be um, happy with where we're at. Um, a lot, but also, we have a lot of room for growth. So I think those are positive things to take out of the beginning part of the season. Um, we we'll put ourselves in a pretty good spot to make a good run at it. So um, like you said, we're getting to the, to the thick of things here. Um, so we're all excited and ready for the last stretch of games here. I, I think uh, just at least in my opinion, uh, coming into the season, I didn't really know much about Brian Oloski as a, as a soccer player. I wasn't maybe expecting a lot from you, but so far, I think looking at this season, you've been a very bright spot for what this team has done. Um, you know, you had an amazing move uh, a few matches ago where it looked like you were going to lose the ball. You were down on the ground. You got back up, you dribbled through like one or two defenders and got across onto goal that almost, I think went in. I think it was just chipped over the, the goalpost. Uh, what were your uh, thoughts? Like, what brought you over here to Orange County, and and uh, what's been part of your early success uh, as far as uh, getting good minutes and and making great plays out there? Yeah. Um, well, prior prior to this season, I was in Europe for a year, and then 
um, at Galaxy 2 last season. And I think that just the difference in this season is that I was able to um, start at the, start out preseason um, with a fresh start and able to stay healthy through it all. So I think it's just a matter of getting a rhythm, getting my rhythm and just playing consistent matches. So um, I think that's been the biggest difference for me. Yeah, you mentioned that consistency was important. Of course, you missed the first match against El Paso back in March, um, but seven straight for you now, uh, and 17 shots, 10 of which have been on target, but nothing yet has found the back of the net. Um, is that starting to weigh on you at all, um, or do you still have the confidence to try and weave your way into some dangerous spots and, and put something on goal? Um, I wouldn't say it's weighed on me. It's definitely... Um, I'd say it's been frustrating at times, but I know I'm getting myself in the in the situations and getting myself in the in the right opportunities to score. So, you know, it happens in in I would say everyone's career where they just go through a stretch of matches where maybe it's just not the the ball's not hitting the back of the net. Um, but I think I've been able to affect the game in other ways, and it's not only about scoring. Um, but yeah, that's definitely that's definitely the, the the last piece that I'm trying to put together in my game and um, I I have confidence in myself that it's very close. So I'm looking forward to, to getting one hopefully tomorrow. So we'll see. Yeah. You've uh, against San Diego, you've had, you, you won a bunch of duels, uh, even aerial duels. Um, You are, I wouldn't say the the tallest player on the pitch, but it seems like you put yourself into a good position. Um, is that something you guys work on in training? Is that something that's like kind of just natural? You seem to always be in the right spot. Um, how do you train to get to that point where you're moving into those positions and winning duels and, and going up, up, up against probably some defenders and winning some stuff when maybe they have a little bit of a height advantage on you? Yeah, I think um, our tactics definitely play a part of that. I think we're put in positions to succeed and – I think that's shown with the, our results. I also put in a lot of work during the break, uh, doing a lot of reaction type drills. So I um, think that's been a big part of, of that aspect of it. I think I've been able to react quicker to balls and get to loose balls faster. I don't think I don't think size or speed has much to do with that. It's more um, for me. It's more about your reactions and for, for that part, it's about just passion to win the ball back. So. I've been trying to take pride into to being better at that part of, the, of my game this year as well. So uh, you came over to an Orange County squad that had, you know, a, a good amount of returning players, but some some other new players joining on there. We talked about it on an earlier episode how um, this is one season where a lot of the newer players have come on and actually made some immediate impacts, whereas in past seasons maybe it's only one or two that have made uh, impacts on this roster. Uh, is there a particular uh, returning player that has – played a big part in, in this success uh, and uh, made it easier for you and the other new players to, to join this squad that's contending for a championship? I, I honestly think it's been a, just a collection of guys who have worked together. So I don't think we see it as, as a uh, new or old players. We're all just one team and we're working towards the same goal. So I, w- I wouldn't really sing a lot. One person that's helped me or others um, along the way. It's been, it's honestly been a good collective effort from the group and it's been, it's been fun getting to, to um, mesh with the new guy, with new guys and um, just finally be able to play games after waiting out so long together. So we've been looking forward to playing games for a while and we're just happy to be in this, in this rhythm and the stretch of games now where we can, where we can do that. So. You've played nearly every minute of every match you've been a part of um and generally you're doing most of the pressing work up top uh, are you looking forward to a break as some players come back into fitness over the next couple uh couple matches or are you hoping that you're all 90 every 90 every three days well my body's been recovering um really fast and a lot quicker than it has in the past so i i think my work in the off season off season prepared me for that um Obviously, with more guys coming back and the quality that we have, um, you know, I'm sure the coaches are going to do a good job of getting a good balance in where guys are getting minutes and we're getting a good rotation in. So 
um, yeah, whatever the, whatever the coaching staff asks, I'll be all on board, and I'm really just excited to make a run at the into the playoffs and and uh, onwards after that. So. Yeah, so being kind of a, a local lad, if you will, uh, Escondido, UCLA, San Diego Zest, Los Dos, Orange County, what's it like to be part of kind of the professional growth of soccer in Southern California, especially over the last couple of years where we've seen this huge uh, kind of explosion of professional teams uh, in Southern California? What is it like to be part of that? And what is it? what would have meant to have something like this when you were uh, going through high school and into college? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely great to be playing close to home. Um, right now, my family's not or no one's allowed to go to the game, so that's a little bit different. But last year, being at Galaxy and before playing close to home, it's nice to have family and friends around to go to the matches. And yeah, definitely, I think the sport is growing um, immensely here in the states, and it's been nice to see the growth and be a part of it. So for for that part, I'm uh, I'm also just thankful to be in this situation that I am right now. And um, able to just go out there and compete every week. So now we get to the point of our questions where we like to just ask a few fun questions just so the fans can get to know a little bit more about uh, Brian Olaski, the uh, outside of soccer, uh, or at least a little bit more about you, just your your personality or where your game has come from. So I'm going to ask you really quickly, uh, who basically have you maybe modeled your, your game after? Who was the player that you looked up to and you said, that's who I want to be like? The very first person had to be my dad. He got me into the sport. Um, after that, after studying the sport, being a fan, um, I grew up to to um, idolize Ian Robbins' game. Um, obviously, him being a left footer, me being a left footer. I think it was the time of the 2006 World Cup where he kind of sprung and uh, became a big-time player, and that's where I, I first noticed him and um, first saw his game. After that, obviously, it had to be for me uh, Messi, just because of the the style that he brings and the kind of player he is. Um, so it's hard to replicate him, but I definitely like watching his video, his videos, and learning what I can from him. But yeah, he's he's just on a different level for me. And so for me, it's it was those two guys growing up. And let's go outside of, of soccer then. Let's just ask you if, if you were to go open up your whatever music app you use, Spotify, iTunes, or whatever, what's the song that would be playing right now if you hit play and just let it go? What what What's on your, your music list right now? Right now. It's a good question. Um, or if you can't remember, what's like something, you know, what what's something that's just popping for you right now or that gets you pumped up for, the, for your matches? I usually listen to some... Drake or some Migos, a little hip hop and rap. That's that's my go to. So nice. Like it. I like it. Some Aubrey Graham. Yeah. Nice. Let's pass it over to you, Dylan. What do you got? Uh, Brian, you, I don't know how many of our fans in this, but you, you have a quite the footballing family, if you will. Um, which, and in your completely biased opinion, which of you is the best and, and why? It's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I have to go with myself. But I can I, respect I, I, I it. Honestly, I love it. I think every single, every single one of my, um, both my other brothers would also just say themselves. Um, we've always been a competitive, uh, competitive family growing up, and you know, obviously, all of us are striving to be the best we can be. So, um, I think with that competitive mindset, every, everyone would say it would be themselves. And you had one, or one more, Dylan, or do you oh. want to give it to Alan first? Let's go to Alan first. All right, I, I was going to ask Dylan's question. That's my question. Well, you can ask it. No, That's go fine. for it. Um, all right, Brian. We ask everyone that comes on the show this question. What is your favorite vegetable, and how do you prepare it? Um, asparagus. I like to pan fry it. Okay. Quick and simple, 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 simple way to do it. You should teach uh, Charlie I'm Adams pretty, how to I'm add. a pretty big cook myself, so. Okay, all right. Yeah, sometimes I'll whip up some broccoli. I think that's a new one for us. I don't think anyone has said asparagus. Really? <laughs> Someone's so, going to um, and tell me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I can't remember if anyone has said it or not. 
And uh, if, if you can hear on this podcast right now or on the live stream, there's a cricket in my studio here. So it's sort of distracting me a little bit. So I apologize for that if you're listening to this. I'm trying to meet my mic whenever I'm not speaking. Um, Brian, really quick, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to join us here on this episode of the podcast. Uh, before we let you go, there's back-to-back matches coming up against Los Dos. Uh, what, what can fans expect out of Orange County? And can, can we hopefully get uh, six points in these two matches? Yeah, I think you can expect us to show up and compete and fight and work hard. I think this is going to help getting a couple guys back this week and back on the pitch. So definitely, definitely a group that's growing in, in the right direction. I think once we put the final bit together in the final third, we're going to be um, a pretty dangerous team. So I think look forward to seeing us continue to grow. And um, yeah, de- I'm definitely looking forward to these next two games and can't wait for the rest of the season to unfold. Definitely. I think we're all looking forward to it. All the fans are looking forward to some great action here. And you got to take care of those those rivals from up north in L.A. County. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's Brian Olosky, uh Attacking midfielder, I guess, would be what, would that be what we would call you on this uh, this roster? Attacking midfielder? Yeah. yeah attacking nice. midfielder for your – because sometimes I see you go to the left of the – you know, more yeah, of the I, left wing spot. sometimes. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure I was getting your position correct because I thought that's where it was, but I see you wander around the, the pitch sometimes. So uh, Brian Olosky, attacking midfielder for your Orange County Soccer Club. Go ahead and watch him and the rest of the guys hopefully pull off six points in these next few matches against Los Dos. Once again, Brian, thanks for taking some time to join us here on the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, no problem. So again, uh, that was Brian Olosky. Um, We always appreciate when we can get a player on the match. Yeah, some crazy... Uh, camera work there by yours truly. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> especially Dilla Dilla, you had like this very like close up on your face there for a moment. That was bad. No one wants that. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, podcast listeners, but not viewers. Yes. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about today uh, with what happened this week, um, what is going to happen in this next coming week. But the first bit of news I want to get to was the announcement earlier today from the club about Thomas Ennevoldson. He is going to stay out in Denmark, I believe, uh, is where he's at. Uh, Sometimes I get some of those uh, Norwegian countries a little mixed up there, but he's going to be staying out there. What Dylan, Dylan's giving me a hard time by saying what I said. Not Norwegian. That's not a good way to say it because Norway is a country. I I, I caught myself there. I caught myself. Thanks for giving me that look. Do you know what the word is? Uh, I I do, but I can't think of it right now. So I apologize. Mm. Go for it, Dylan. Educate me. We can wait. This will just be a sign on the podcast until you figure it out. It starts with an S if you want to hint. S-C- Alan, help me out, Mr. Teacher. S-C-A-N. I know it's Scandinavian. There you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> I thought the crickets were the best answer. <laughs> <laughs> Those darn crickets coming it's in. Just like it's just one like of your one cricket. classes, I'm sure. Uh, today Ooh. was bad. That's what it sounded like. You just like <laughs> talk into the void. Can we can we get back into soccer here, gentlemen? Sure. Instead of crickets and oh, glasses. This is a so- soccer podcast. This is a soccer podcast. So let's talk about this. Thomas Anavolton. It was announced today that uh, he's being loaned out uh, to. I'm not going to even try and say the name of the club. I'll let one of you guys say it because a I don't have it in front of me, and b I'm not going to attempt it. Uh, but he's going to be um, away from the team at least for the calendar year. He's scheduled to return in 2021, hopefully, um, if he gets a chance to. If this hall gets back to normal, which everyone has finger crossed on that. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Dylan? Uh, was this uh, anticipated by you, and how does it impact the club? Yeah, at this point, I assumed he wasn't coming back, and it doesn't make sense for him to just sit around for five months and do nothing. I imagine Oro probably plays, play, pays, excuse me, pays for his wage, the duration alone. Um but he's, you know, still getting a, a match a week or so, and he gets to be home. He gets to be um, with his partner and with his child, which is obviously huge. I can't blame him for not wanting to come back during the middle of the pandemic, and that's kind of the beauty of having a multi-year deal, as we can say, especially right now. Uh, you know, yeah, stay in a place that um, took this seriously, and and it's not as much of an issue, and you can still do your job. Just keep him in fit and then we'll see him next year um we know he works really hard so we don't have to worry about yes he's getting a little bit older and um, time marches forward for all of us but 
he's able to work hard enough to kind of stave that time off and him being able to keep some match fitness for a few months is only going to help us. What are your thoughts on it, Alan? Um, I know this is probably weird in the United States where we don't have things like, I don't know, family medical leave, like paid family medical leave. So it would be weird for like, it seems weird that a person would want to take time away and like actually spend time with their newborn child. Um, I can't fault him at all for doing what's best for his family. Um, and not coming here um, is probably what's best for his family. Um, and as an Orange County supporter, you would want him to make sure that he was doing what he needed to do. Um, and obviously you want him to come back. It seems like he wants to come back. I think he's happy in Orange County. Um, but obviously life has happened and um, I, you have to respect that decision for him to do what to be with his uh, his newborn, and um, I, 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 you could have you saw this coming when he didn't come back after the birth. Uh, you just saw the writing on the wall. Uh, hopefully, this gets him paid and make sure that his family is taken care of. And so, when he comes back, it's not going to be a stressful environment for him to come back to. Uh, so, I support him one hundred percent, and it's good to see him uh, still. The club still saying we want him to come back. He's he's got a spot when he's ready. Um, that speaks to the club, and uh, I, th I think it's a good sign for future signees that, like, the club's not going to go, well, you know, if you're going to go take care of you, you got yours, forget about you. It's, I think it speaks to uh, the club and the interest in the well-being of the players. And I think a, a very interesting part, at least for Orange County fans, is, you know, you look at the the loan – a, you rarely see a loan to a top division in another country coming out of the USL, which is an awesome thing to see. I know uh, the Danish Football League isn't the Premier League. It isn't La Liga, uh, but it is still a top flight league in Europe. Um, so you're seeing an Orange County player loaned out to a top league team. Um, hopefully he'll get some, some playing time out there, which is definitely a good thing to see. And I, I think it, it – it, Bodes well for Orange County just on the on the international stage as far as being able to loan a player to a league. I know it's due to certain circumstances, probably wouldn't have happened if not for COVID-19 and for the birth of his child during this pandemic. But it's nice to see that Orange County is is willing to loan one of their top players to a, a team in a top league uh, in their country. Um, and it it is, you know, Orange County has built this now international thing with you know, partnering with Rangers. Now they're loaning a player to a top league in the Danish or top team in the Danish league. Um, it, it's hopefully going to bring some recognition to Orange County and the USL for some of these European leagues. Cause now someone that follows uh, this team out there in Denmark, is it, uh, is it Hobro, I guess would be how we would say it. I don't, I don't really know the correct pronunciation, but you know, maybe now you have uh, maybe gained a new fan or two that are going to watch into Volts this year and, and continue to follow him when he, he comes to Orange County, hopefully back next next calendar year. Um, and great, great for the club finding a way to at least get him some playing time during this this whole this whole scenario too. Um, I, I think uh, we all sort of knew this was happening once um, this all happened. He was out in Denmark still, and the signing of Chandler Hoffman or the loan of Chandler Hoffman. Uh, to the club is sort of the the writing on the wall for that, knowing that you're not going to carry probably three quality strikers or, or scores or forwards or whatever you want to call them on the roster um, on there. So um, best of luck to Thomas and Volton out there in, uh, in Denmark, and we wish you the best and hopefully you come back ready to score a bunch of goals for us next calendar year. Uh, let's move ahead. It, it wasn't the greatest week for Orange County when it comes to performances on the pitch. Two matches, um, only one point in those two matches, and probably the biggest headline coming out of this, and we've sort of seen it throughout the year so far, uh, but now it's maybe – we've talked about in this past, when has it become um, a little bit more of a concern? And it's the lack of goal scoring for this Orange County – club uh, we look at the roster you know there are players on this roster that can score goals we we know that looking at these names but now we are how many games into the season and we're having trouble putting goals into the back of the net um so there is a loss in vegas 
uh, what was it? One, three, I believe was the score there. And the one goal was off of a penalty kick by Aiden Quinn. And then you come back host San Diego and it's a nil nil draw. Uh, so I believe I can't remember off the top of my head, but we haven't scored many goals this season. What, like eight goals in the whole season, I believe. And this is just off the top of my head. I'm not looking at stats. So if I'm wrong, do not be angry at me. Am I wrong, Dylan? I know you're looking it up. I can see you there. Yes. Very proud of Good you. Good job. Everyone, this is a monumental moment in the history of the Orange and Black Soccer Cast <laughs> as Ray Samora has actually said the now, correct thing. I'm not going to be able to say how many matches have we played? The same amount. So one goal a match. Is this concerning for a team that is fighting and competing and thinking they deserve to be in the playoffs and competing for a championship, Dylan? Does this team think they deserve to be in the playoffs? Not to answer your question with a question, but I don't think they do. I think this team realizes that they don't deserve it, like a certain team with 20 points from 10 matches played at the top of the group. I think it's a team that realizes they're going to have to work hard, even if the other teams aren't as strong. Um, one game per goal is not going to be good enough in the playoffs. It might get us into second place, and it might get us a playoff spot, but I, it's not going to fly come playoff time because it's one player switching off for 10 seconds away from going out. And we saw that two years ago. Now, let me talk to you really quick, Alan. Um, and you can answer that same question, but I also want to ask you, cause we, before we went on the, before we went live, we mentioned like who would have thought two matches against Los Dos can make or break a season. Basically what we're looking at here, right? Um, these are going to be very important matches for orange County against Los Dos. The next two matches coming up. Um, I think, if we look back a couple weeks ago, everyone looked at Orange County with games in hand and an unbeaten record and uh, a very great defense that's not letting goals in. Yes, we're not scoring, but we're at least not letting goals in um, as they are. It's their group to lose. And we've now come back to where we are now. And we're looking at it as like these are must win matches. You have to come out of these matches now with six points uh, to feel good about yourself heading into the final stretch of this this group play. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're essentially, it's still San Diego, or sorry, sorry, San Diego, Jesus. It's still Orange County's group to lose. It's not San Diego's. They're not going to win. They're not going to make the playoffs. Um, it's still Orange County's group to lose, essentially, at this point. Um, you have LA, Galaxy, and San, and um, going on a run. Uh, they're essentially at the same point in the standings as Orange County is. Uh, eight games played. 15 points um two more losses and three or two more losses and three less draws is essentially what it is um la galaxy has scored 16 goals but have given up 16 and essentially what you're playing for right now is you're playing to get a stranglehold over a playoff spot if orange county can get two wins over the next two games it puts a lot of pressure on phoenix to not only uh produce uh, but it also puts some space between that Los Dos team who you drop points against Los Dos, it's it's basically a, a swing. Like If you draw both matches, you're now at 10 games each at 16 points, and now you don't have control over your own destiny because now you're playing a bunch of teams that aren't Los Dos. So these next two games, uh, especially the uh, Wednesday game, is going to be a huge game for Orange County to say this is still our group to win. Um, they can close the gap to two points with a game in hand um, and put more space between you and Los Dos. But Los Dos is playing really well right now. They're two, they've won two in a row um, and have looked pretty decent in those two wins. A, um, obviously, one of them is against Timbers 2, and they probably should win that by more than that. Um, and they're playing a resurgent Vegas um, so those two wins aren't to be taken lightly, uh, but I think Orange County, like, I wouldn't have circled these two matches on the calendar at the beginning. I think one of them wasn't even on the calendar at the beginning. I, I don't think. I think it was a reschedule. But I, I think saying Orange County versus Los Dos is going to make this group um, is something that you could probably have guessed 
but not two games in a row at home, both winnable games. Um, Orange County has got to figure out how to score goals. Otherwise they're on razor thin margins and talking about that team further South down here, when you play with those margins and you can't score goals, Orange County proved it against San Diego. They were able to take advantage of two mistakes and bury them. And that was the difference in the game. It wasn't like they like outplayed them for long, t- a long amount of time. They were just able to take advantage. And if Orange County can figure out how to take advantage of their opportunities, they'll be fine. If they don't kick it straight at the goalkeeper, they'll be fine. Like essentially a post away from getting one against San Diego would have made a huge difference. But when you're relying on those margins, that one post hit might be your best shot and you don't bury it. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't think that was necessarily um, anyone's fault. That was a great move that Jarwin Jones made. He put himself in a great position, beat his defender squarely, put a great shot it on, on frame, but literally was on frame. And if that's like your best shot and that's all you're going to get, it's, it's going to be hard to go on the road against a Phoenix and, and do well. It's going to be hard to go on the road against Reno. We saw what Reno was able to do at home against Phoenix. Like you, Orange County needs that number one spot to avoid Reno because you want to send Phoenix up there to say, hey, if you're going to win, you got to beat Reno. And I think Orange County needs to realize that if they don't put some wins together, they're going on the road against Reno too. And I don't know if that's a position you necessarily want to be in the way Reno's playing right now. Well, it hasn't historically gone well for Orange County. Uh, the 2-2 draw last year was pretty bad, even if a lot of players are playing out of position and it was really hodgepodge kind of squad. Um, also, historically, 1.6 points per game is usually enough to get you a hosting playoff spot. But in a season that is two-thirds the length of a normal one, 1.6 points per game is probably going to see you end up in fourth place, at least in this group. Group F or something, you're probably like, oh, look at us, we're in second, or maybe even first. But against a Phoenix, that's going to probably pull two points per game, and another team could be any one of them at this point. If they all start scoring, that could be the difference maker. 1.7 to 1.6 points per game could be playing a match, in the playoffs or sitting at home and hoping you can bring back players next year. So let me ask you guys this question then. So um, you look at this roster, you're expecting we should be able to score goals. There's proven goal scorers on this roster. You're looking at someone like a Ugo Okoli who he has scored goals in this league. Uh, Chandler Hoffman who give it to him. He's had some injuries here so far since he's joined the club, but he has scored goals, goals in this league. Darwin Jones, he has scored goals in this league. Um, so where is the problem with this roster with, with that Orange County has? And why are they not able or what's been wrong? What has gotten them to this point where they cannot put goals into the net at the rate that they need to be? I'm going to go to you first, Dylan. Uh, they keep shooting straight at the goalkeeper. That's it. every shot in the last two games has gone straight at the keeper. And usually from a distance where it's a pretty – simple save as well. Alan, do you agree with him? Yeah, I mean, they're getting shots off and they're getting shots on target. So it's not like they're not getting shots. It's not like they're not getting themselves in the position to finish. Um, I, I agree. It's it's the quality of chances. Um, and then it's what you do when you get into those positions. And... I don't think Orange County is that far off from being able to put in two to three goals consistently um, because you've had some really good performances um, and you've scored, you know, you scored two against LA Galaxy last time, but it's, you know, it's, you're relying on a couple people again to put the ball in the net and you need some of that secondary scoring. So Cammy Palmer needs to have another good game. Um, you know, Olaski, once he, I think once he finds the back of the net, I think he's going to open up and do well and get confidence. Um, I think Shauna Coley maybe is pressing a little bit because he feels like I'm the striker and I need to put one in every game. I, I think they're getting shots. 
and I think it'll happen soon. But I mean, you look at the lineup: Olaski, Okoli, Hoffman, Jones, Coleman. You know, Palmer's been pretty consistent. Qu- Quinn's been good. Like you have these names that should be able to score you one or two goals per match. And so it's just maybe there needs to be a, a, a different tactical approach at the top. Maybe there needs to be, you know, maybe a little bit less sitting back and counterattacking, a little bit less over the top, and, you know, maybe a little bit of mixing it up, good build-up play and some over the top. Because, um, I mean, you have Quinn on your team. He's going to put in a couple of really good passes that, you know, basically get you through two lines of defense several times a match. You just got to take advantage of it. And I think um, there was a couple times where they just didn't. And if it's a game or two, you're like, ah, it's just whatever. But it's been consistently through the season. And you just hope that something clicks over the next two matches. So um, you sort of transitioned to me what I want to ask next, because now I'm going to sort of question the strategies that we have going on here from Co- Coach Braden Cloutier. Uh, and what we're doing, uh, we've we've seen this season. We saw it for a decent part of last season. Aiden Quinn's playing deeper than he did when he was a, an MVP candidate for USL a couple seasons ago, uh, scoring a lot of goals, getting a lot of assists. Um, is there is, is that potentially a mistake to have Aiden Quinn playing so far back? Should he be playing a little bit further up in the pitch um, and participating a little bit more on the offensive side of things? Uh, and would that help out this club? Maybe unlock this this goal drought. Uh, let me go to you first, Dylan. Um, I think it would un- help unlock the goal drought. Yes, but I don't think it's the right decision. Quinn is obviously very comfortable and very very good at playing where he plays. If you push him further forward, you're asking Danny Crossosimo to do a lot of defensive work all by himself. Um, and that's gonna we're gonna start leaking goals if we basically don't have two holding midfielders. Um, right now it's simple too because um, they're not asking Crisasso to make they're not asking him to create chances. I don't know if he's created any chances this season and they're not asking him to hit 40 yard balls. Um, it's win the ball back, make a turn and either lay it off to a fullback or lay it off to Quinny and and have uh, Quinny, ping it or move forward with it. So I like where he's at right now. I like that he's getting into the box or close to the box late on in attacking moves. I think that's the best option for us because if we have to recycle um, the ball or it takes a bounce off of someone, he's probably going to be the guy that's there and he's the guy with the technique and the ability to put that ball on target from distance. Let me let I'll let you answer this question, Alan, but I want to just throw a different little twist to this question. Is this where we're missing someone like a Christian Duke who could play more of that defensive midfielder role and let Aiden uh, proceed up front? And, you know, Christian Duke's going to be very solid uh, in the midfield and helping out in defense. Or do you agree with Dylan and, and say, hey, this is where Aiden needs to play right now with this roster. And this is the best plan we have. Um, I think Brian Olaski alluded to this a little bit is I think these, the players have a little bit of freedom to, to move up. Um, I think you see this from Quinn. Um, he steps up, um, when he feels that he needs to step up. And I think you leave it to those players to step into spots where they feel they can take advantage of some space. And so I think some of it is Aiden Quinn feeling that, you know, that's not the space for him to step up into. When you see him go forward, it's usually pretty successful. Um, so I think he's just measuring his chances. He's that last guy in that that banger against San Diego is a good example of that. Like, he's not like sitting back like a traditional holding midfielder. Like, he's that next guy in as he's reading the play. Um, I think um, the loss of um, Seth Kasipley Help, uh, hurt a little bit of that. Um, but I think looking at kind of the style of play, I think it, I'm not sure that Cloutier, apparently that's how we pronounce it. Apparently Cloutier is San Diego soccer's fault. Um, I don't necessarily think that there's a lot that Orange County needs to change. Um, they're kind of league average in shots. I think they're 15th in the league. Out of 35, so top half. Um, 
but they're definitely, when it comes to goals, you know, they're 27th. Um, I think some of it is just the quality of shots. I think finding the corners of the goal is going to help. Um, I think, I think it's maybe just a little bit of a confidence issue. I think players are maybe not trusting in their instincts to put the ball where it's supposed to go. Um, but I think, you know, when you, you saw a couple of games in a row, a couple games back where when Orange County plays the way they want to play, they can relinquish possession all they want to, and they know that they're going to get three, four, five good opportunities, and they're going to score two or three goals. Uh, I think the problem is right now those just aren't going in. They were up against a couple decent keepers, and that's another thing to keep an, keep an eye on as well is a goalkeeper can steal a goal or can steal a save, and now your three opportunities that look really good, only one of them goes in or none of them go in. Um, and, you know, you've seen that as an Orange County fan with Frederick Dew. Like, Frederick Dew has saved games. Um, I, I I think they, they float between kind of a 4-4-2 and a 4-3-3, and maybe moving to a more attacking positioning up top allows them to go at some teams. But I would say that Braden Cloutier knows more than I do, and so I trust that he's going to make the best decision because he always at the end of the season he's always in a position to make the playoffs and be successful. So let's let's get into this then, right? So again, disappointing week that we just had with only one point two matches. Uh, I think heading into it, I think we all expected Orange County to come away with at least four points in those um, two matches, if not the full six points. So now we're going into this. Back-to-back matches against Los Dos. Uh, two matches, again, that I, I, I think heading into earlier part of the season, you expect Orange County should be able to win, but now maybe there's a little bit of loss of that confidence uh, heading into this match. Uh, I'll go to you first, Dylan. Uh, let's put you in. You're, you're, you're the coach for Orange County. Uh, do you keep going with the game plan you've been going with all season, or is there something you do to switch it up and uh, find a way to, I guess, get these – six points in these next two matches. This is only a really difficult question to answer because I don't know if everyone's fit or not. I don't know if uh, Seth Sibley is 100% fit or even, you know, 80% fit. If Seth can play 60 minutes of a match uh, and then you have Cammy Palmer come on for the final 30 or vice versa, then, then yeah, I think you maybe open up a little bit more than we have. Uh, Lostos have only scored more than one goal three times this season, and it's mostly been against garbage teams, uh, RGV and Portland Timbers, and some other match that I forgot who they played. But I think you can be a little bit more expansive against the side, take the game to them, and maybe make some of the kids sweat a little bit, and uh, you know also wind up guys like Augustine Williams. Um, if everyone's fit, then yeah, open it up. And if it's not, and we need to conserve legs for, you know, another game in three days, then no, four four one one four four two like Brexit, uh, footy, you know, just garbage to watch, but effective. Welcome to twenty twenty, everyone. Alan, what are your thoughts? Are there any changes you would make uh, based on what we know about this roster right now? I know we're not total insiders we don't have the inside scoop on who's fit who's going to play who's not going to play uh, we learn about it just as quickly or as soon as most of you learn about the roster decisions uh, and the injuries so alan um based on what you know do you go with what's what they've been doing all season or do you make any changes i, I mean i think maybe um i would like to see kevin coleman get a little bit more playing time um, and I don't know if that's a fitness issue from before, uh, but I think when he is on the pitch, he can, uh, do some good things. Um, he came on in the 73rd minute against Vegas. Um, I, I think he has gives some speed. I think what they did against San Diego was smart as far as the, um, putting Darwin Jones and Kevin Coleman kind of swapping those two positions and really getting, cause there was some, definitely some opportunities there um, going against kids. It's going to be 
um, about making sure you stay um, formationally sound and use the time you have. I, think I don't we think... lost Alan there. Unless Did we? is it just me not hearing him, Dylan? I know your ears, old man. Keep going, Alan. Um, I, I think you had some success against Los Dos. I think right now it's it is a little bit pragmatic soccer because it is try to get into the playoffs and then once you're in the playoffs you're fine. Um, every point is amplified. Um, I, I say stay with what you're doing. Your back line's solid. Trust in your defense, um, and hopefully Darwin Jones gets in a good position to score and doesn't hit the post. And um, you know, I think Kevin Coleman might have kind of a breakout game, and he gets you know he uses that speed to get behind uh, and, and and gets one late. Yeah, um, you know, Kevin Coleman definitely a big part of a potential change for this roster. I think. Uh, more playing time for Darwin Jones, again, depending on the fitness of these players, um, would definitely help out. Uh, but hopefully, whatever the solution is, or if we stay with it, uh, Coach Braden Cloutier, 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 whatever his his pronunciation is, I'm just going to go with all of the different ones, and I probably butchered all of them, um, has the right answer. And hopefully, Orange County is able to come away with full six points in this upcoming set of matches here against Los Dos. Uh, so let's get into this. Typically, we'd like to do a match prediction, um, but let's do this. Let's just predict how many points Orange County is going to get between now and our next episode. Uh, there's two matches against Los Dos. Uh, how many points is Orange County going to get over this these next two matches, Dylan? Six. Are you are you confident on that that answer? I mean, you gave it pretty quickly. Is how confident are you on six points? Give me a percentage. Nine out of ten. I'm gonna be optimistic here. Wait, I think did you say ten? Well, I said nine out of ten. I think oh, we nine can. Out of 10, um, okay. I think we can get six. That is not a pipe dream. That is what we should get out of these matches. And we'll be disappointed if we get four. And anything less than that is uh, very, very bad. Alan, what do you think? Do you agree with Dylan? Six points is pretty much the expectation, and anything less than four is bad. Uh, I, I think any team going into two matches against the same team is going to like or, Orange County is going to expect to get six points. Um, I think they draw end up drawing one of these two matches um, and get out of there with four, um, which I think is fine. Um, that puts some gap in between you and LA. So a draw and a win is not going to break your season. Um so I, I, I'm going with four points. I think any team like Orange County should go in with the mentality of getting through the first match and getting through the second match. Um, that first one's going to be the key uh, to you got to win that first one. Um, but I think that's the one they draw. Yeah, um, I have to go. The, the hopeful side of me has to go with Dylan and say six points is what we should what the plan is. Uh, but the brain of me wants to agree with Alan. Four points is probably what we're getting out of these two matches. Um, it's tough when you're going against the same opponent two times in a row. Um, it's it's one of those things that uh, that's going to be difficult. Why we all agreed? Well, but Dylan, you said you're nine out of ten confident that you're going to get six points. So you didn't really agree with Alan and I that it's going to be four points. Sure, that's fine. I mean, realistically, I think four points is what we're getting out of these two matches. I'd love to say six because I really feel that's what it should be. But when I'm looking at it, back-to-back matches against the same club, four points is probably more realistic. And again, Um, the hardest thing to do is not knowing who's fit or exactly who's fit and ready to play and how much those players can play. They said DJ might be 100% this week. Uh, Same thing with Kevin Coleman. Uh, Seth Kasifli might be good, you know, 8% fit. Maybe it's good for an hour. That's a huge well, and, and, and let's say this, you know, Brian Olosky was on our show earlier, and he said there's some players getting back into fitness for this match or for these coming matches. So, like you said, Dylan, it could be some of those players that have been either limited on their playing time or have not been uh, hitting the or, – or getting playing time because of either injuries or lack of fitness or whatever. So, I mean, we're, we didn't get any names from Brian, but – he at least said it sounds like there's some players getting back into shape, back into fitness 
ready to get back out there for Orange County. So that'll that'll be good to to see. Okay. Um, really quick before we go into other soccer news, I, I want to dedicate a, at least a couple minutes to this. And I know you guys are probably going to give me a hard time about this, but it's the return of the EUSL coming up this next week. Um, Alan's not participating in it this year because he has a very busy life. He may been, do some play by play with Dylan from I time to cut. time. I was cut. The team cut me. Um, you were not I, I cut. Wasn't, you were I was offered a position back. Set for you chose release. not to. I was set for release. Uh, <laughs> added to the unwanted list and let go on a free transfer. I think uh, in Alan's words, it was like, I'd be willing to do some play-by-play from time to time, but I can't commit to playing matches weekly, which is understandable, but it is returning. There's, the return is going to happen begin next week. Um, I will be participating in that. We will stream the, the matches on here from time to time. Dylan and Alan will and or Alan will jump on and do some play-by-play. I'm also going to recruit them to do potentially play-by-play for the actual league and um, do play by play for some of the big matches in lieu of doing it for me. So maybe it'll be me talking for my matches and they'll call a bigger match or a more important match. Uh, I will be participating in the top flight, the premier league for the USL coming in as one of the lower seeds, the lower teams in there. So I'm not anticipating a lot of victories heading into this, which uh, uh, should be fun for, for people watching me that like to make fun of me. Um, Dylan definitely on the calls will be making fun of me a lot of the time. Alan too, uh, as I get defeated, I'm actually um, taking on one of the better teams to start off to kick off the season, uh, and that's Evan Warwick from Forward Madison. Um, I can't wait. So that that's going to be interesting. Uh, but the interesting now is after the first season, we've now set it up. It's a Premier League, and then there are an East and a Western Conference of a Championship League. Uh, sort of sounds similar to what's currently with the MLS and then the USL with an Eastern and Western Conference. But we're going to have Pro Rel in this now going into this. So. Um, you're going to see the top teams from the championship are going to move up. The lower teams, potentially me, in the Premier League are going to move down. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I will be uh, doing a lot of the social media s- stuff for this. So I'll be plugging this a lot on the new Twitter account for the USL, which is at USL underscore Xbox. Uh, and you can watch the matches on our Twitch account. So um, check it out. I, I know this is an Orange County Soccer Club podcast, but I'm going to just do a shameful plug of the USL Xbox. And also, there's also a PlayStation side, but I'm on the Xbox side, so I'm going to plug that a little bit more. Uh, there's myself, and Emrod is also participating. I'm in the premiere. Emrod's in the championship. So you have two people representing Orange County in this league the next season. So support them, watch them, and hopefully they can win. I mean, I'm going to do my best to win. I'm, I'm hoping... Now that we get to use better quality teams, I can actually put up a, a better showing. So come check it out. Follow uh, us on Twitter again at USL underscore Xbox um, and stay tuned to our channel and also the, the USL Xbox channels on social media for matches that will be streaming. Um, do we give time? Let me ask you, Dylan, do we give time to Alan to rant about handballs? Yes. Um, yes. Because... Um. Oh, yeah, Dylan wants to do it too. Do. It sounds like Dylan wants to mention these handballs too. That was the worst refereeing since I've seen um, the Open Cup game last year. Okay, really uh, quick, Dylan. Was... I'm going to pause you really quick. Alan, Dylan's taking your time. So um, go Dylan, ahead, man. Quick. Go off because you are right. <laughs> I'm going to preface this by saying I don't necessarily think that that official is a bad official. I just think she had probably the worst night of her life. You're too um, nice. You're too nice, Alan. Uh, I mean, we all have bad games. I mean, she's been good in the past. She has been, yeah. and I, I just think that the game got away from her a little bit. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty physical. Uh, so some of those early yellows were definitely deserved, uh, but I think it just got a little bit of a weight, got a little away from her, um, and I think that she missed some pretty blatant calls. Um, I literally wrote down that Danny Chrysostomo earned a yellow card in the 80th minute and then was flabbergasted later in the match when he wasn't given his second yellow because I wrote it down. I was like, oh, she's going to go back and she's going to give it. He tackled him. I mean, come on. It's the attack. He tackled him. It's a yellow card. And it wasn't. It was mind-boggling. And I... and I think at that point, I think for both teams, there were some calls that probably should have been called that weren't. There were some cards that probably should have been given that weren't on both sides. 
uh, the Mackingila tackle. I think he tried to avoid it, but there was definitely a cut, like two tackles in a row that one of both of them were probably yellow card offenses, but only one of the San Diego players got a yellow card. And then the handball. I understand missing a handball, but if you understand physics, you understand that if a ball goes in and then straight down, it didn't hit his shoulder. Um, and the the way that Rob Kiernan was clapping at the end of the game, I think he knew he got away with something, uh, and he knew he was riling up the San Diego players. Um, on behalf of the advertisements, um, or on behalf of Landon Donovan, I would like to apologize to the advertisement boards. I was going to ask you this really quick, Alan. Uh, can you provide us with the address that Orange County can send the invoice for fixing those advertising boards because of Landon Donovan's abuse against whatever ad was behind that board? Can Can we just uh, donate it? <laughs> can we just donate it to the uh, field maintenance instead? I think that's money better. The field looked better. I will say it did look better. Uh, so at least they're making an effort. Uh, so I would much rather like pitch in for that. Um, pitch in. Hey, yo. Um, I, I think the same issue with some of the other games that I've watched where there has been some relatively not inspiring officiating is it just kind of takes away from the flow of the match and the enjoyment of the match. Um, I get mad sometimes when I watch matches. I was, I think this is the maddest I've been this season. Um, I, I just think I guess that you were the one that was managing the, the fair weather pod Twitter account and posting those videos. Or was it someone else? I can neither confirm nor deny that I was the one posting your multiple videos. angles. You, you provided multiple angle, oh, angles. I mean, come on. Everyone knows that I do that. I did that. I do that all the time. Like it's something that I enjoy doing is like, I, and I get that there are plays that are bang bang that you, you got it like it's 50 50, but I think that one w was pretty blatant. And I think Chris Walker said it's karma for the Real Monarchs game where the goals went over the line and they, <laughs> right? I was like, I like, I can convince you that neither of those were goals, but I, I just think in, in an enjoyment of the match, I think the second half was a little bit hard to watch. Um, at times, what I think this does do is I think this kind of starts some type of trash talk rivalry -ness. Uh This is a type of game where there's a little bit of animosity toward, from San Diego towards Orange County. They feel a little bit hard done. Um, I, I don't. Sure. Yeah, that's not that's not that's not a controversial take there. there Ray. Um, I, I think this is kind of something that maybe is poster board material for the last game um, where maybe it's a little bit extra where you want to kind of prove that you probably should have won. I think if a draw was a, a, based on the match, a draw is a fair result. I don't think any team was a hard done in any way. It's just hard to watch like no card at 62, uh, no handball at 70. Um, I wrote, it was bad. Yeah. I wrote Christosimo should be off exclamation point and boxed it like on my okay, notes. Okay. So we understand the frustration with the lack of cards and the lack of the call for the handball. Let me ask you really quick and Dylan, I'll give you a quick chance, but I want to ask Alan while we're on this. Um, do the San Diego players at the end of that match need to show a little bit of restraint? Cause there was a bunch of them getting in the face of the official at the end of the match, or is that justified in the face of the official? Is that to me or to Dylan? Uh, you first, and then I'll let Dylan give his quick take on the whole situation in that match. I, I think yes and no. I think, I think in the in the heat of the pa in the heat of the moment, I think some frustration, venting some frustration, is inevitable. Um, I think at that point, it's the job of the captain to step up and to engage the referee. Um, and, and or the coach at that point, the match is over. Essentially, it was the last kick of the game. Um, I, I think you let the captain do the talking. I think you can vent your frustrations. And I think like the Charlie Adams literally falling over in disbelief was probably a, a more appropriate approach. 
Um, I, I think it's the same conversation you have with Santi Mora um, pushing a coach. You can say it's the heat of the battle, but in the grand scheme of things, you need to know where the lines are. I don't necessarily think anyone necessarily crossed the line, but I think like ganging up on a ref isn't going to get anything out of it. Um, it. Vent your frustrations, but then once the captain's there, I think that it's the captain's job to do that. And you can be mad and you can be upset, but in, I don't think cor- like four or five people running to the ref to plead their case is going to put her in a good position to even consider anything. Um, I think you, you can, you can yell, you can vent your frustration, but I think maybe letting your captain step in, but I've never been in that situation. So I can't really judge Dylan. Dylan, I'll give you just a quick chance just for time purposes. Quick Uh, point. Go for it. Alan's right. It's the captain's job. It's the manager's job. The full time is gone. Um, If you are not the captain, and you are not the manager, it is not your job to run at the ref and plead your case and scream in the face of an official. Um, That is, you know, that's why the fourth official exists, so that the uh, managers have someone to yell at. And that is why captains exist, is so uh, someone can um, go and talk to the ref or yell at the ref. It's it's valid, um, I think, at that point. Alan said earlier, probably the worst time of her life, uh, career-wise. Um, very, very poor. And you you heard that from both managers, I think, um, Cloutier especially. Cloutier especially just saying that was it was abysmal, but both teams also needed to be better. And I think that was the thing that really needs to be said here is both teams really should have done better in this match. And it wasn't the ref's fault that neither team could score. So, I mean, basically at the end of it, we can all come to agreement, it sounds like, then instead of uh, taking out on innocent advertising boards, you should go talk nicely to the referee at the end of the match. It was a that's, that's that's what we've learned at the end of this match. Don't attack innocent advertising boards. Talk to the talk to the ref. Um, let's do this. Ran, <laughs> ran, <laughs> my co-hosts are pissed at me now. I can see it in their eyes. Um, <laughs> there you go, Alan. Uh, let's go to random thoughts really quick. And we have little time. So random thoughts, Dylan, you first go. I've uh, not Alan, been... no, no, okay. I'm joking. Dylan, wow. go. <laughs> Dylan, go for reals. I, I don't he wasn't ready re- for this. Yeah, no, I don't really show. have anything. How many this times week? Dylan, have you been on the show and you're not ready for random thoughts? Look, just be gracious in defeat. And that's not a thing to land in for kicking an advertising board to Mr. Donovan. Sir, Sir Landon Donovan. I don't know. That's not a thing about him. That's just a thing about. I know a lot of Orange County fans who are enjoying a little bit too much the fact that Phoenix drew against Las Vegas, and then look what happened. It's a <laughs> wild year. Don't go um, my random thought is I went out and hung out in public for the first time yesterday, and it was both terrifying and enjoying. Went to the beach, had a bonfire. We were separated from people, um, and. I will probably be attending the Orange County San Diego match in San Diego on the 13th. So I'm looking forward to seeing one game in person this season. I'm doing one um, and I will wrap myself in bubble wrap. So that's my random thought. In bubble wrap. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Yes. Be safe, Alan, when you do that. Uh, random thought for me go Clippers. Clippers are making uh, their way to the next round of the NBA playoffs um, after defeating. Uh, crying Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, they're looking forward. I, 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 I know they're playing someone. I think uh, I got to see. Did the did the other match end? Yeah, we're out of time. So I tragic. Talk. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on the Orange Black Soccer Cast. Alan, you want to take us out? <laughs> they're playing. No, they're playing Denver Nuggets. That's, that's who they're playing. I had to look it up. Yeah. Um, Alan, let us know about any advertising that our listeners need to know about. Thanks to our sponsor, Roughneck Scarves, the official scarf supplier to the MLS, USL, and U.S. Soccer. Get your custom scarves for your group or team at roughneckscarves.com. Tired of the same old uniforms and cookie-cutter templates from Nike and Adidas? Looking for a unique, completely custom kit for your youth club, Sunday League squad, adult, or even EUSL team? Icarus FC can help you create the kit of your dreams at an affordable price. Let them help you design your new custom kit today at IcarusFC.com. 
I want to thank our guest, Brian Olosky, for joining us. Uh, follow us on Twitter at OCSC underscore SoccerCast. You can go to our website, OCSCPodcast.com. Um, and you you probably should already know where to find us. But if you're watching live stream, look it on the screen. And you can see where you can find us on Twitter. Uh, for Dylan, for Alan, this is the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. And we are out. <laughs>